Hello. If you're watching this, I'm dead. I created a hidden object, an Easter egg. The first person to find the egg will inherit half a trillion dollars and total control of the Oasis itself. Ready Player One is a massively popular book that people everywhere seem to love for some reason. Can the movie possibly live up? I will let you know, but first, please subscribe to Universe for more on the stuff you love, stuff like Pacific Rim, Uprising, Tomb Raider, Avengers Infinity War, and a whole lot more. So I have to start by admitting that I hate this book. I read every page of it, and I hated every page of it. But I had high hopes for the movie anyway, because Steven Spielberg. And besides, I kind of just thought that it would work better as a movie anyway, and it does. Ready Player One is obviously known for the ridiculous number of references to like 80s and 90s things that we love that it jams into every single scene. Um, and that just works better when it's a visual that we're seeing play out on the screen instead of just a list of things on a page that we're reading. Like the book, the movie follows Wade Watts, AKA Parzival. That's his name uh, within the Oasis, which is like this virtual reality world slash social space slash game that everyone in the entire world is obsessed with. It's like the most important thing in the world. It's a couple of decades in the future, so it's really advanced. And like half the movie takes place within the Oasis, um, which makes it really CG heavy, but it honestly looks really good. Like I was really impressed with the visual look of the entire film. The movie just has a great visual language overall. Uh, it's really easy to understand everything that's going on, but at the same time, almost every scene is just dense with references. It's ridiculous. And the tech that they use to access the Oasis, um, like the headsets and like the gloves and the haptic feedback stuff and the treadmills, everything um, seems really futuristic, but also seems like kind of familiar, like an evolution of the tech that we have today. They did a really good job on that stuff. So the story is that the creator of the Oasis, James Halliday, before he died, he hid this uh, ultimate secret within the world of the Oasis, this Easter egg that will give the player who finds it complete control of the entire thing, also making them filthy rich, of course, in the process. Players like Wade, who are obsessed with finding the Easter egg, spend their every waking moment trying to learn as much as they can about Halliday, which includes consuming every movie, comic book, TV show, album, anything that he uh, was into in the 80s, which is where all the references come from. Wade's main competition is a corporation, an evil corporation, called IOI. Um, they want to get control of the Oasis so that they can fill the entire thing with ads, which honestly is a pretty relatable problem for us in this day and age. Basically, this is all set up for like a pretty standard good versus evil, little guy versus the big corporation, hero's journey type of story. Like, Poor people within this world have crappier uh, VR equipment, and rich people like IOI have good equipment, but they're not passionate about the Oasis. You, you see, you get it? The movie does a really good job setting this all up though, so even if you're not a massive nerd like me, and you don't get every reference, or you don't know like what VR technology really looks like, you can still follow it, and it's really accessible. The thing that doesn't really work about this is the Oasis itself. Like, as a concept. Um, the movie sets up some rules, others it leaves vague, but for example, um, if your character dies in the Oasis, you lose everything. All your money, all your items, everything you've earned. If you're walking around with 10 years worth of loot and cash on you, boom, it's all gone uh, the first time some idiot runs you over in a car, like chops your head off or, or whatever. If you've played many video games, you know that that's not really how it works. Um, and if you could lose everything that you were carrying at any moment, then people wouldn't be like investing their life savings and taking out mortgages on their house, which the movie establishes they do. But on top of that, the movie doesn't even really stick to that rule because some characters have like workshops or apartments within the Oasis where they clearly have stored objects. Like they're keeping things there that they're not carrying around on them. So like what, which is it? You can't have it both ways. Also, there are like social spaces within the Oasis, like this nightclub that they go to later where the uh, bad guys, IOI, just like bust through the wall and start shooting people. So can you attack other players anywhere within the Oasis? Because if you can, then the entire thing would be a bloodbath. If you've played any games online, then you know that other players cannot be trusted to play nice unless there are rules in place that force them to do so. This is a problem that on a large scale, I feel like the book had as well. That said, I think the movie does a lot better than the books. It makes a lot of changes, and I really liked most of them. Like, the part I hated the most about the book is the entire relationship between Parzival and Artemis. Like, she tells him to f off, and he basically stalks her for like an entire act of the book, and it's like super weird and gross, and the movie is just like, mm, no, get rid of that. Gone. Love it. Also, the cast is really great, especially Lena Waithe and Olivia Cook. 
I don't want to say uh, like what actors play which characters because it's kind of a spoiler to say who's behind the different avatars that you meet in the game, um, but it's really fun and there's like some good reveals. Ben Mendelsohn is great as Nolan Sorrento. He's the evil head of IOI. Um, and he's weirdly likable despite being the villain, which I think is a sign of a good villain. TJ Miller is really great as this character who we actually only meet his avatar, um, but his name is I Rock and he's supposed to be like this big intimidating uh, like killer guy. Um, and yet it's TJ Miller, so he's like constantly complaining about his neck pain, which is honestly, I think we can all relate to a little bit. So here's what's good. Honestly, it's just a lot of fun to watch. It's a blast and it's really fun like watching every scene and seeing all the references like there's this huge battle at the end where it's going to take hours to just freeze every frame and go through and try to pick out every single reference and i guarantee you people are going to do that we're going to do it ready player one looks great the story is really relatable um it's really accessible no matter how big or little of a nerd you are it feels like a steven spielberg movie which is obviously great and i really love all of the changes that the movie makes to the book because i hated the book but there is some bad as well if you're a nitpicker, like I am, there are some things in this movie that will just drive you crazy. And I kind of think it's going to be specific to which references rub you the wrong way or you feel it doesn't completely get right. Like for example, at one point they have the, uh, the Holy Hand Grenade from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, one of my favorite movies of all time, and they don't even count to three. They don't even count to three before they throw it, it might as well be any grenade! Play the clip, run the clip! First shalt thou take out the holy pin, then shalt thou count to three. No more, no less. Three shall be the number thou shalt count, and the number of the counting shall be three. Four shalt thou not count, neither count thou two, excepting that thou then proceed to three. There's a lot of little things like that that are uh, gonna maybe drive you crazy, maybe not, kind of depending on your knowledge of all this nerdy stuff that the movie references constantly. Most of all, I think the biggest problem is that the Oasis just doesn't make sense as a game, which again, if you're a huge gamer, it might bother you, but it might not. Overall, Ready Player One is honestly super fun. It's a blast to watch no matter how much my gamer brain wants to nitpick it. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments what you think of Ready Player One. Please subscribe to Universe. And of course, you can hit me up on Twitter at Rogue Cheddar, where we can have a fight about Ready Player One. I hate this book. I know you probably love it. A lot of people love it. Seriously, come to Twitter, fight me. F*** you. This book sucks. Movie's good though.